Good afternoon. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip, Friday the 12th of February, uh, episode number 751. Oh, I've triggered them. I have triggered them. I take the piss out of people. I've done it all my life. I love doing it. I love a bit of banter. Um, I've I've not been discriminatory on here. I have taken the piss out of Arsenal fans, Chelsea fans, West Ham fans. Villa fans, City fans, Birmingham fans, Coventry fans, Wolves fans, anything. But you get the old Liverpool, you have a little pop at them and you get a different little breed pop out. I've had a couple of right old right old goes with a couple of people about my views uh, that I've expressed on Klopp. Um, a couple are just not happy. I've lost them. They've gone. Liverpool fans gone. We've got no one left. Um yeah, unbelievable. Just shows you. I mean, I've don't. I I've never hidden it. I despise Liverpool. I've never ever hidden it. I've got my reasons for doing it. I could do a three hour podcast on it. Um, you can't fault what they've done in the last two years. Been absolutely fantastic. Been by far, along with Bayern Munich, the best team in Europe. You can't fault Klopp. He's an absolute winner. One at Dortmund. One at Liverpool. Can't fault him. Doesn't mean you got to be an arse. And then the fans come out being asses when you have a little go at him. I have a go at my own team. I'm, I like to think that I'm honest. I have a go at Spurs fans. That, the, the sort of Klopp thing, this, this, oh, he can't do any wrong, is exactly what some Spurs fans do with Winks. Because they wear a Spurs shirt, they've got to be brilliant, they've got to be good, leave them alone. You could put a Spurs shirt on a kangaroo and there's some people at Spurs who'd say he's playing well. Um, I do exactly the same. I said it. Yes, I think Martin Yole was a very good Spurs manager because I liked the, his conduct. I thought Pochettino at times spoke absolute garbage. Coming out philosophy this, philosophy that, philosophy this. This is a game of football, Maurizio son. There's no philosophy involved. Stop banging on about it. Um, so all I commented was, I mean, the old cold feet, ridiculous statement, and he's been a bit of an arse to reporters. If you want to defend that, that's fine. Crack on. There's a there's a play button for this podcast. Don't press it. Just crack on and go and do what you do with your little cloppy world and leave me out of it. Don't listen to it and then get all upset about it and have a go. And then when I come back to you, have another go. It's That's it. I, I'll do it open air. I don't like the way he behaves, plain and simple. I don't fault what he's done as a football manager. Obviously having a bad time now. Don't mean you need to become an arse about it. Yeah, but we've upset them. They come at me, you know all that. All oh, this, oh, you fucking wanker! Yeah, behave yourselves. Get a fucking grip. It's a game. It's a fucking game. Sort yourselves out. Pathetic. That's why I don't like Liverpool. You're pathetic. It's not the main reason I don't like Liverpool. I've got lots of reasons. I've got lots of reasons. It's always nice to trigger them, though, isn't it? It's always nice to trigger them. They've had a lovely couple of years, so nice to get them. Um, Right, where are we? We're Leicester Liverpool. Let's do the EPL preview. Leicester versus Liverpool. Leicester 3.5. The draw 3.65. Uh, Liverpool 2.24, Liverpool 155, I'm going to talk a little bit about some ELO, I know that only relates to ultimate members but uh, you know I can use the pod to help them, um, Liverpool 154 ahead uh, on ELO ratings between these two teams um, and uh, the ELO profile of away teams who are 150, 175 dead and priced under 2.25, uh, home teams have only won 12 of 74 matches in that circumstance um, so where you've got an away team ahead by 150 to 175 uh, and they're priced under 2.25 um, home team has only won 12 of 74 but but you have to look at current form lift player in a current decline um, their away form was patchy all season um, no I was letting them down um, Fortress Anfield has now been breached most recently with the 4-1 defeat um, to City um, and and they're in a period of uncertainty um, Leicester patchy home form themselves lost 1-3 to Leeds 0-2 to Everton 1-2 to Fulham um, if we now decide that Leicester are a top six side which I think to be fair is a probably fair move um, and let them take the place of Arsenal um, then the top six Draw method would qualify here. Uh, the FTS modified Poisson calculates the most likely score 1-1. Uh, Liverpool's ELO has fallen over 100 points in this recent period and teams showing that trait rarely win away against top six sides. Um, so back the draw. Um, 
or lay Liverpool would be me if I was playing um, laying Liverpool at that price or back the draw as a sort of one of the as a top six method. I'm going to leave the top six method. We'll see where the table ends up. I'll, I might revamp that at the end of the season for next season. Um, of course, if um, Allison's got two pair of socks on, then Liverpool will win eight nil because he won't have his little cold feet, will he? Um, oh, they don't like it. They get triggered. They don't like it up. And I'm not listening to him anymore. He's fucking having a go at my mate Klopp. Clippity. Um, yeah, there you go. Back the draw or lay Liverpool. Um, should be a good game, hopefully. I mean, obviously, uh, Liverpool need to need to turn up. Leicester playing well, but have their have their blips. Um, Crystal Palace versus Burnley. Uh, you sort of hear those two names and you think, oh, let's get involved in the unders. Um, but the price is about right. I think overs is a stretch in this game, but unders is 1.62, so it's not bettable for me. Is that a word, bettable? Not bettable. Bettable. Bernard Matthews, bettable. Bettable turkeys. <laughs> uh, Palace are 11 clear uh, over Burnley on ELO ratings. Um, going into the game and in this Covid closed door period there have been 19 EPL games where the home team's 0-25 ahead and priced 2-2.5 to and back in the away team has produced 6 points in those games laying the home team 4 points profit back in away against Palace since 2012 when they've been um, an ELO of 0-50 over their opponents has produced 9 points profit in 29 games I do think Palace are too short here. Um, I don't mind laying them uh, with a view to lay to back them. You know, if it stays nil nil, they're going to pry, they're going to drift out eventually um, during the first half. Uh, and obviously, if Burnley take the lead, then then you could do more. So I don't mind laying Palace here at two point four eight. Um, Burnley always a tough nut to crack. Um, I know they're down there, but I do like Sean Dice. See a manager I like, entertaining in that. Um, in that, uh, when he was talking about looky likeies in his press conference, um, City versus Tottenham, one point three five City, uh, six the draw, nine point eight Tottenham City, two hundred and twenty three ahead in the ELO. Uh, don't need any ELO. Get your house on City. Um, Spurs extra time midweek. City are flying. Spurs have only beaten Sheffield United and West Brom um, since the Christmas program. Um, who are 19th and 20th respectively when they've played top flight opposition obviously they've beaten Marine and Wickham um, but hardly anything to shout about um, yeah so that's it they, you know Tottenham are awful I'm not just saying they've only won three of the last 12 in the league it's, I don't think it's going to improve that record I don't think they're going to improve it in the game after that I, I fear that if Everton can score five that we could be in for a complete paste and Tottenham are going to try and sit back um, obviously they're not going to play the front foot that they tried to play against Everton um, but it doesn't matter whether they play front foot or sit back the players aren't good enough defenders aren't good enough to stop teams scoring um, obviously if City get an early one Tottenham are going to go and have to try and score this could be a hide behind your sofa job this one um, cannot possibly see anything any way uh, other than City absolutely dominating this game and, and battering Spurs Spurs just aren't good enough it's plain and simple you know Spurs fans will come to realise it soon it, this has been a, I keep saying it two three years of decline two or three good players we're relying on the rest are just garbage as, as they prove midweek we try to play front foot and you go and let five in um, we're absolute cabbage we really are um, we're, we're bottom half side I mean Suggsy in that one have it that is what Tottenham are Tottenham will Tottenham have you know they're making their way down the table second a few years ago then fourth then sixth uh, it'll be seventh eighth ninth we're going to end up a bottom half side that's what we are um, that's where we're going Brighton versus Villa uh, Brighton Villa 2.88 Brighton 3.55 the draw 2.64 Villa Villa just ahead 6 points ahead on the yellow um, Brighton have won one of the last 15 at home that's the facts and we know that was Dr Spurs turned up and cured that run uh, I said last week, I don't think Brighton are the dreamy team. People suddenly make them out to be with a win over Spurs and that uh, Liverpool. Uh, Spurs are just dreadful. Liverpool were, you know, on the, the start or middle of that flailing run they're on at the minute. Um, Brighton failed to beat Burnley, as I predicted last week. Um, 
and say almost almost level on a yellow villa you know villa have improved this system this season but still inconsistent i said against um i said against um arsenal you know i, I did fancy arsenal maybe then gun to me head but either one could win um if there's a winner in this game i can only see it being villa um and i'd stick my neck out and say lay bright um i just i think brighton are a bit short here i i, I if i if I just can't see them winning the game if they get, if there's going to be a winner here. I just don't see it being Brighton. Um, I really don't think they're very good, and I think the record of one in fifteen shows they're not very good. I know there's people who wax lyrical about Potter's football and they've been unlucky and it's turning, but um, not for me at the moment. I'd need to see a lot more evidence. Um, and Villa, you know, Villa with players like Grealish, they can go and win any game. I think. Um, I think if I had to gun to me head, I've got a say Villa would win it um, but a lay of Brighton get the draw on side Uh, Saints versus Wolves 2.5 for the Saints 3.3 the draw 3.25 Wolves Uh, Wolves are ahead on the LO 53 purely I mean it's catching up it's coming down obviously Saints have been on a dreadful run lost 4 or 5 on the bounce before beating Wolves last night in the FA Cup couple of horrific defeats in that the 9-0 obviously at United Wolves I mean you don't even know what's happened just sliding down the table um, well, they're nothing like the team of last season uh, they have only won three games uh, this year since again since Christmas um, Three to, they've beaten three teams of similar ability um, Chorley, Palace and Arsenal all by a solitary goal Um I actually like the Saints here. I think the Saints are a good price here. Their their home team, when you start to break it down, um, home form isn't as bad as it looks. Um, they beat all the teams they've played below them. They beat West Brom when they were blown. They beat Everton when they were blown. They beat Newcastle. They beat Sheffield United. They did draw with Brighton. Uh, it's the big teams where they found are losing to Spurs five two United. You know that's the teams where they they flounder. Um, and given Wolves' form and position, uh, the fact that Saints will be, you know, confident after the win last night, back Saints to continue Wolves' bad run. Saints two point five four. I don't think is too bad a price with the run that Wolves are on. Uh, West Brom v Man United. West Brom ten point five. Um, draw six. United one point three four. United three hundred and nine clear on ELO ratings. West Brom. We know they huff and puff. You know, huffed and puffed against Spurs in the first half. Should have gone in in the lead. Didn't ended up paying for it. Um, they're going down. Big Sam's down first time, uh, if, unless they sack him beforehand. But they're going down. Um, United will win this game. It's just a matter of when they win it. You know, up one point three four United. I don't want to back them. I'm not going to lay them because they might score early. Um, but I expect a similar game to the sort of Spurs game. West Brom will huff and puff. United will break it and eventually. Whether it's in the 10th minute or the 60th minute uh, and go on and win the game Arsenal versus Leeds Arsenal 1.96 the draw 3.95 Leeds 4.1 Arsenal 34 clear on ELO Uh, I cannot get involved Leeds win one lose one win one lose one I keep saying Arsenal improving Um, put them up a couple of times on this um, podcast uh, only for them to prove to me that they're not it could be anything. Uh, the overs is 1.6, doesn't appeal. I think the angle here, I, I, it's not a game I wouldn't play, and I think the angle here is lay the team that takes the lead. I think if Arsenal um, take the lead, lay them, uh, and similarly leads uh, and trade them when the other team equalises, I think you will see goals here. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see something like 2-2, 3-3. Two, two, three, three. Um, so I think this is one where I will trade the team, lay the team in front. Um, and, and similarly, if it went 1-1, one, one, I'd then probably lay the team who went 2-1 up. I think it's one where you could um, could do that. This could be a bit of a... Any, anything could happen, couldn't it? Um, and Everton versus Fulham. Everton fresh off five past Spurs. Um, on a good run again, 1.96 Everton, 3.75 the draw, 4.3 Fulham. Uh Everton look big here at 1.96. I mean, you're Arsenal 1.96 there, Everton 1.96 against Fulham. Um, which one would you want to back? I'd be on Everton all day long. Uh, Everton, they're backing and blind at home. 10 points profit. 
Uh, if they're odds on, it's about five points to the ratio of whether they're odds on or odds against is there. Uh, I don't know whether Calvert-Lewin is fit to play after going off against Spurs. And if not, you may want to lay the draw. Everton are 169 clear on ALO and laying the draw in the Premier League where teams are 150 to 200 ahead and is produced 35 points from 188 games. Um, so if you weren't confident in um, Everton winning the game, you could... I think you're pretty safe laying the draw, um, certainly from a trading point of view. But I do think Everton win this game. I think Everton's firepower will be too much for Fulham. Um, maybe a bit of a battle early on, but um, if Everton uh, attack, certainly like they did the other night, and uh, I can't see anything else than an Everton win. Um, that is it. I mean, we've just got to go and hide behind the sofa and wait till... What a horrible couple of games, Spurs, City and City and West Ham. Jesus Christ. Can't we just play us? Can't we get a Grimsby or something? Somebody we might beat. Um, all right. Oh, do I apologise to Liverpool fans and say I'm really sorry for upsetting you? No, of course I don't. It's not what we do, is it? Uh, right. Have a, uh, have a lovely little Friday. Do have a profitable weekend. Um, I had a good. I've, I'm, I've had a few bad weeks, as I keep saying. I was obviously ill within the power. This week it was Excel, but got all that fixed yesterday, all sorted. So I'm, I'm fully operational to push forward. I'm looking forward to a good weekend. Going to smash it out the park, win a few quid, and then Monday mindset Monday, and then next week I can cover some other bits with you um, and catch up. Um, other bits email admins and stuff like that just bits that I've got to do uh, but yes have a lovely weekend I do hope you um, I know it's all getting a bit dull this lockdown I'll try and entertain you a little bit more it's all it's just it's Groundhog Day same thing every single day I did enjoy actually not having any football last night which is quite pleasant to sit and not have to not, not that I have to but I choose to obviously but just to not have uh, screens in front of me this that and the other I could no, I could at any time say so I'm not doing it, but it was just nice being relentless. That last night there was none whatsoever. It was lovely. Uh, I didn't watch the cup games. I didn't even look at the results till this morning. Uh, right, enjoy your uh, weekend. Um, but I'll be back with you. Obviously, we've got no NFL this week. That'll be a bit miserable, won't it? But I'll be back with you all. Um, I'll have to find a filler for the NFL. Might look at trading some golf on Sunday evening at um, Pebble Beach. We'll have a look at the leaderboard and do that. Have a Lovely weekend, uh, good Friday, and I'll be back with you tomorrow.